guys, welcome to another episode of Mahjong Talk. I'm your host, Peter Vong. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of my latest videos. Okay, so let's just get started, all right? Uh, let's see here. Okay, so we have the Peerless um, Ichihime event. It's still going on. It's going on until September 2nd. So basically, we have a lot of time to, like, you know, uh, play through the game and actually get some summon scrolls or whatever it, items you want uh, from the game so I think you basically have to get some sort of um, basically like requirements like you know certain hands and just keep winning first place I guess and then basically you keep advancing forward through the little Ichihime game Ichihime game that they have in here so let's just let's take a little peek at it first before we get started So yeah, so basically I've won a couple games with my friends before, so basically I'm just advancing forward to much bigger and bigger bosses here. And that's basically how the, the Ichi, uh, I guess the Peerless uh, Ichihame event goes. It's basically you just like uh, try to see uh, how much you've won, and then basically you just like uh, play against these bosses. And depending upon how much you advance in your games, you basically just get through. So I think we get the gist of the idea. Uh, let's just exit for now. Alright, so I haven't checked out this. Okay, so summertime. I think this is also like something like you get further on. Also, this is like a story type of thing. So I think you could just like skip the dialogue and all that stuff. Okay, so basically you just play through these and basically you get these special things right here. So uh, I think I'll go through these a little bit later. Alright, so let's just uh, play a game, shall we? So, what I want to talk about to you guys today is basically envisioning, creating, and then basically... Uh, I would have to say, basically, like, try to envision what type of life you want to get, and then basically see what that life is like, with, without worrying about, like, the money issue, like, basically, without worrying about how much money it takes to get to that point, because I think, basically, once you have a vision of what exactly you want to see in your life, then I think, basically, the, mo the knowledge of how much money it will take to get there will come eventually. Um, whether it be eventually or better through your own research because life is all about learning and you always have to constantly learn and all that stuff uh, ooh, I think I'm gonna get up I think I'm basically aiming for a half I'm either a half flush or a full flush hopefully we can get a full flush because <laughs> this looks like it could be a full flush hand if we could play it right uh, so basically the thing of it is is that everything in life from what I've experienced is that the best things in life are usually the one the things that we kind of make for ourselves in other words like the creations that we make are like usually the best moments in life as far as from my experience and it doesn't have to be like stuff that makes money or anything like that it could be just stuff that you just created out of like boredom because I, I always remember like the best memories I have is usually like you know with friends is that like we created like a game by ourselves like you know uh, Let's try that. I know I probably made this a little bit useless, but I can probably use it as a pair or something. And the thing of it is, is that um, making up a game instead of having like, you know, already a set up board game with all rules and all that stuff. It brings me back to, um, as you guys who have watched me for a while know that I'm into math and physics. And there's a theorem called uh, Girls Incompleteness Theorem. And what that theorem says is that, uh, like, broadly speaking, most people say that when you actually read Gödel's theorem, it's a difficult theorem, so even I don't know how the mechanics of it work because, like, I don't, I don't know about mathematical proofs, but in layman's terms, they would say that anything that is, there are some truths that mathematics cannot prove, that's one interpretation of it. 
But another interpretation of it is, uh, it's from uh, the interpretation of uh, Roger Penrose, who is a mathematical physicist. And I think I follow this more uh, in my own beliefs, is that... Ooh. Uh, well, there's one circle left, so maybe uh, I'll get lucky and someone will discard it. Because not many people <laughs> discard, uh, I mean, need this uh, one of circles. But we'll see. But then again, they probably won't uh, deal it because, uh, you know, I already have all these circles ready already. So, we'll see. And the thing of it is, is that uh, the other interpretation of Girdle's Incompleteness Theorem that was uh, introduced by Roger Penrose, which I didn't think about until, like, he actually said it, is that you can prove something is true if you believe in the rules. And the thing of it is, is that if it's true according to the rules, then that means it's only true in the rules. But that doesn't mean that the rules are limited to basically just being that. Like, in other words, the rules are not set in stone. In other words, the rules continue to expand. Oh, nice. Full flush. Nice, manga. Yeah, and the thing of it is, is that I think simplistically, it's basically, it's like, I would say, like, if you think of Girdle's Incompleteness Theorem as like Yu-Gi-Oh! So Yu-Gi-Oh! is basically like, you know, it's it's a card game if you guys haven't played it before. It's a card game where basically you play with uh, monsters, and basically you have your monsters attack your opponent or your opponent's monsters. So the game has totally changed since I last played it because uh, before it was just summon monsters, you know, you summon monsters and then you power them up with spell cards or magic cards. And basically you also activate trap cards to basically stop your opponent's monsters from attacking. That's how I remember it. But now it's basically there's a lot of different rules added to it. So there's like new sets of rules. So I, my, my analogy with um, Girls and Completeness Theorem is that yeah, the rules of Yu-Gi-Oh that I know it, the strategies that I know would be true if I played through the old rules. But now the new rules are in, and that means that the rules have expanded. It doesn't mean that my style of play is untrue. It means that the rules have expanded to more than what I've actually created for myself based on what I know about the rules. So my rules, are, like, my knowledge of the rules are limited while, like, you know, the rules of Yu-Gi-Oh! now are just more expanded. So that means my truth is just a little tiny truth within, like, this whole plethora of different other rules that can actually make my truth kind of, like, non-existent in a way. If that makes any sense. If it doesn't, I apologize. I, I tried my... I, I was trying my best to actually explain it. The point is, is that basically life is not limited. And the thing of it is, is that... We have to find a way. We have find. We have to find ways to create our own sets of um, rules that we follow by in our own life, and that's basically how it starts. It's basically constructing yourself. And the thing of it is, is that once you construct yourself, then you can basically create creations that maybe help enlighten others about who, what your truth is or what you see about the world. And some people might think that that's really silly, like, you know, the things that you see probably are very, very silly, but some people might be enlightened by that. This is why some people, like, support others, and this is why some people bring down others at times, because sometimes it's just a really brilliant idea and nobody sees it, or maybe it's just an idea that has full of holes and um, it, it doesn't really conjoin well with, like, uh, with how people think logically. Like, a vast majority of people think logically, so. And that's, and it's also very empowering to actually create stuff. Because when you actually create stuff, you begin to see that you're able to take stuff from the world, random stuff that many people probably wouldn't have think of, and then suddenly, like, you morph them into your own type of creation that may benefit you in your own life, or it might benefit someone else if you told someone about uh, this little thing you made. I remember when I was a kid, I was like, um, actually, like, 
if I was serious enough, I could have actually created cosplays <laughs> because uh, I remember like I would take cardboard boxes and uh, when Yu-Gi-Oh! first came out, right? Um, the anime, I mean. Um, if you guys know about the dual disc, like the like in the original Yu-Gi-Oh, um, the dual disc looks so cool. Like basically, it was just play, like it was just like a big huge thing where you would play your uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards on. And the thing of it is, is that they didn't came up with the toy for that yet. So when I saw that on television, I was like, "Yo, that looks cool." I decided to make one. I actually made one out of cardboard. <laughs> It wasn't very good though. It wasn't very good. It bent my cards and everything, but at the same time it was also um, fun to make. Like it took me I think like a couple hours to make it. Um, it wasn't really well made. I won't I won't say that. Like, but it was really cool. I actually made my own dual disc out of cardboard. You know, I actually tried to put cards on it and everything and I put, you know, like uh, I would put the spell cards and trap cards in like the little slots that I made. It was a real, it was a real fun project. And you know, and I think that's basically what life is all about, is basically just being creative and trying to actually create those projects that kind of takes us away from the boredom of life. And you learn a lot from basically making projects like that because you begin to see what you're limited to and you begin to see like, how can you make something work? The problem is, is that um, people really want us to be problem solvers that solve things like in a hint of a, like a real fast, like, uh, really fast type of problem solving. In other words, we have to solve it within a second, um, which is not how being creative works. Like being creative, like you'd have to take time, you have to step back. I mean, this is the reason why there's such thing as writer's block. And the thing of it is, is that I'm trying to figure out exactly what kind of creations I want to make. And, you know, I try to think about what I'm going to construct uh, like I try to look into like building websites. I also try to look into like, you know, writing my own novel and all that stuff and creating my own story. And being creative is also not easy because you also have to think about, okay, like what makes sense and what doesn't make sense and why do I implement this thing or that thing? There's a lot of questions to ask yourself when you create because there's no rules and there's no one to tell you what is right and wrong. But at the same time, if it feels right for you, it could be a unique creation or it could be something that just like, you know, you just put on your shelf and basically say, oh, I made this. Even though people don't appreciate it, I still made it. And I think that's basically what we have to get used to in life is that basically we create not just so that others can look at it and say, oh, you're a good artist or you're a good singer or you're a good, um, you know, house builder or something like that it's all about basically just creating for yourself to know that you're able to do something that involves taking stuff from this world this physical world and somehow constructing it into something that is probably something that not many people have seen before and it doesn't have to be stuff in the physical world it can also be stuff that's very abstract like mathematics for example not many people think of mathematics as a creative pursuit but it is it's creative because it uses it uses logic as rule as a rule set and then basically it's somehow from the rule set we are able to create I guess this is where you would probably think of loopholes like you would find like loopholes within like say like the rules and when you actually see the rules and you actually construct something based on the rules and then you're able to create something that not many people have seen before based on those rules like say like a new strategy that basically overcomes uh, like an old strategy that hasn't been taken down for years, such as, you know, like ideas in physics or um, ideas in mathematics that not many people thought of. It's really, really enlightening. And also, it's a really great mo feeling when you actually discover something that you never thought you would uncover. It's like those epiphany moments and uh, those eureka moments, actually. And that's what's most important in life. It's like we basically go through life to actually find those moments where we say eureka or if you're like oh my gosh i can't believe that i haven't thought of this until now it's those moments in life where we grow the most and it's those moments in life that we reflect the most so the thing of it is guys is that like you know i'm not trying to say like you know you should like uh give up everything just to create what you want what i'm saying is is that don't expect your creations to get you higher through society. Expect your creations to basically build you as a person. 
that's basically what I'm saying because we all want to create stuff even though we humans we think we're not creative like we can't draw some humans say we can't draw some people say oh um, I'm not good at X Y and Z so I shouldn't even try the thing of it is is that like I said life is all about learning and if you don't if you want to do it but you don't feel like you don't have the skills yet just learn just basically like watch YouTube videos like go on the internet like look on look on different alternatives to learn and you will go through life feeling like you're not really like as brilliant as like say people outside would say and the point of life is is that you always think that you're always going to be this learner even if people say that oh he's like he or she is such a great artist like there's nothing that can outmatch them but at the same time you're always going to walk around inside yourself that um that you're never going to be like this you know this person that's like on the cutting edge who's like at at their prime you're not going to be you're not going to have that feeling because you're always going to have this mindset that you're always going to keep learning and you're always going to keep advancing forward and sometimes like it feels like uh the more you learn and the more higher you get the less there is there are less sources to basically tell you that you have one more step to go so basically you have to find a way to create those um those steps for yourself and that's not really easy sometimes you have to be your own teacher at that point okay this uh, okay, so this person is in first place. Well, being in second place is not that bad. So I just have to make sure make sure I maintain it. So my point is, guys, is that success usually is a timing device. It's basically like if your creations get you success, like money, fame, congratulations to you. But does that fulfill you internally? And if the answer is probably yes for the moment, but probably no for the long term. Because the thing of it is, is that we people are always constantly learning and we always want to get up to, we always want to talk to the people that actually know more than us and are actually better than us. That is if they're, uh, that is if they fit with our criteria of like what we want to learn from a teacher because also teachers also are also important. Uh, and also there are teachers that are honest with us and basically say, I have nothing more to teach you. Uh, there's nothing more you can learn from me because like uh, they see the limits of their lessons and they see the limit of their own knowledge. So we learn from each other. This is why te this is why teaching is so important for like not only the student, but also the teacher, because they taught you all they know. And then they realize that there's a limit in their own knowledge and they have to go on their own journey to figure out what is it that they're lacking. So you're always going to be on this journey of learning. <laughs> it's kind of funny because, um, like, um, if you guys have ever seen the show uh, Inside the Actor Studio, it's a show basically where um, a college professor is interviewing um, actors, and he would always end his lectures with um, an interview by, I think it's an actor by the name of Prevost. And... Uh, the last question of that questionnaire would be, um, if heaven exists, what would you like God to say to you when you arrive at the pearly gates? And my answer, like I told my friends, um, my answer would be, um, I want God to say, here's a notebook, here's a pen, prepare to write some notes because I have a lot to tell you. <laughs> and like one of my friends was like, you want to continue learning? You're dead. There's nothing, there's nothing more. And <laughs> you know, like like hearing that I began to think that there are some people that just don't want to learn because they think that life is always going to end like you know um, well obviously you're dead but physical existence ends but we don't know if there's a life after death and if my soul figuratively speaking is able to still learn stuff I still would want to learn stuff because the thing of it is is that if you want to be a success like like most entrepreneurs and most people that we know are famous like you know like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos they never stop learning they continue to read books and they continue to educate themselves uh, whether it be like you know in business or whether it be in uh, whether it be in their own whether it be in like their own curiosity like you know going to space or like learning more about science and all that stuff or learning more about like literature or things that people would think that that doesn't make money why would you want to learn more about literature and all that stuff and 
the truth of the matter is is that they just want to learn it just for curiosity's sake and some t- and the thing of it is is that i believe this is true curiosity will eventually lead you to gaining wealth and i didn't say money i say wealth and you know wealth uh is knowledge but knowledge also has to come from creativity and being able to like imagine how to make connections with like stuff that not many people have are able to visualize well i guess i'm in second place then but that was a good game that was a good game Okay, go up a little bit, and I think I'm going to get this heart, I think, yeah I am, so I'm going to get this bonding gift here, got some copper, got some copper, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I just realized, I also realized that I also got an uh, email from Mahjong Soul, so we got a summon scroll, and we got a little bit of item bag, so I'll just claim those, um, I'll delete this email here, and uh, we'll go to items here. I just want to see what's in my bag here so okay we got a little dress here and I think for I think we're just gonna do a summon since we have a summon scroll uh, let's see what do we got here summon Raj I think we're gonna do so let's do a summon we're probably gonna get an item so I don't think we're gonna get a character so we'll skip that yeah we got an item okay uh, let's all right let's see about the Here's Ichihami event. So I think we can. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, let's see, confirm. And I think we're at this point. Uh, what's the missions? Okay, I'll claim that. I'll claim this. And I. Th- oh, I can claim all of these. Okay. So yeah, like yeah, uh, you guys have plenty of time. We still like are a bit deep in the event so i think we'll be able to press on forward until like september so we'll claim this and i think that's it i think that's it so far yeah so we completed all these okay so but we still have a oh we still have like four more to go okay uh training Oh, you use these. Oh, you this, use the skills you get to basically uh, boost your abilities here. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, rewards. Okay, so we get copper. So we claim our rewards. Oh, okay, so basically when you go through these stages, you get rewards. Um, and I guess for uh, how far is there a summon score on this one? Let's see here. I don't see a summon scroll. I usually care about the summon scrolls, but you know, sometimes items are also good. Okay, so we'll exit here. Uh, summer in dots. We'll claim that. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna play. Uh, well, I think I'm just gonna basically just skip through. Uh, so I'll just click here. Click here. Okay, so I'll just claim this copper. <laughs> so you guys can see how the event goes. Um, oh, I gotta like go through these. Yeah, why not? Well, let's just cover like all this stuff. So that way uh, we can claim well, our, our stuff here. Okay, so we'll claim that. And I think we're just gonna claim the last stuff. So that way I can like show you more items I get guys so we'll play this we'll claim that and the final bag will go like here go right here and there we go so let's see what items we get oh whoops that's the shop so we'll go into items okay and we got a cookie. Okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna switch to my main screen here. Okay, cool. Okay, so guys, 
I hope you like what you saw. If you like what you saw, consider a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of my latest videos. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, as well as if you want to engage a game with me or any of my friends or just talk, talk life with us in general or just talk about your interests, uh, you can join us on the Newbridge Discord server as well. And uh, if you want to catch me on the Twitch live streams, you can catch me on Twitch um, Monday and Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and as well as Saturday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, yeah, I believe that's it. And I will end this video the way I usually end all my videos. Everyone is precious. You guys are just as precious as everyone else. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.